And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And things are going okay. We're uh, still refining lots of petroleum down here and whoa, how did that get in there? What the? Did that door open and then close? You know what? I don't want to know. That doesn't seem like it should possibly have been able to get in there. No damage to any of the window tiles. Little things that happen when you're not paying attention. Anyway, petroleum seems to be refining just, well, fine. We have plenty of these tanks over here. I'm going to have to go in there and delete those at some point. They, they don't need to be there and they're overheating. But uh, we kind of sealed those in. We'll, we'll, we'll get back in for that petroleum later. But for now, it, it's all right where it is. Just so long as we're refining all the petroleum in there, we don't care. Uh, base running on lots of mushrooms. We're still going fine on that. Our new little, uh, a little micro mega base is coming along just, f well, it's finished and everyone's having a great time. However, it's now straight up. We are going straight up here and we are going to core out this base biome. We want to get our hands on shovels. They're the only good source of infinite food that won't kill our game entirely. Um, everything else will run out. The slime is going to run out. Dirt would run out. Water's too expensive. I mean, okay, you could theoretically live on dirt, but the problem would be more the case of to get the dirt, we need an ethanol refinery, and to do that, we need to get pips, and we need to get acorn seeds, both of which require the gateway, and we can't do that because we're printing every dupe we get. So, I'm afraid it's going to be lots of voles and straight up into space. Also, they'll stop climbing up that pole once we filled up that uh, little, our, our little liquid lock. Uh, you know what happens when dupes get absolutely entombed in regolith. Uh, come on. Don't worry, we'll get you out of there in no time. We've got plenty of good diggers to dig you out. The exact same thing is going to happen this set. Uh, you know what? Let's maybe preemptively stop that and make sure they dig out all of that first. It will make life so much simpler if they would. Well, things just got a little bit more interesting. Uh, I think meteors just started to fall. Uh, yeah, where's the edge of the map? Right, let's start building walls up there to stop all the meteors from smashing us to pieces, maybe. That looks more like it. As well as that, there's level 7 priority for the top walls and then level 6 for the ladders. All the other builds down here are all level 5, meaning everyone should focus on getting as high up as we possibly can. And once we're there, oh, you know what, maybe uh, get rid of that there and finish it off with a, a full-on fire pole. Tra travel distances are going to be our biggest problem even at this rate. Uh, we have 48 dupes that are all belonging to this micro mega base. And all 48 of them are the longest running dupes, so they should theoretically have the fastest movement speed. But that's still... the space biome is just far away and difficult to move through. This is going to be slow no matter what we do. Right, soon we will have at least a little bit of a shield. I would really hate if a meteor was just to land right in the middle of all of them. I think this is the most dupes I've ever had, like just... ooh. That's a brown trousers moment, guys. Just keep going, keep going, you've almost got it. A little bit of a shield will help. I don't think anyone got hit so far. This has actually been going... You know what? Not gonna jinx myself. While this, all this construction continues, I'd like to point out we have insufficient oxygen generation. We were supposed to have 4.7 tons. Well, we only produced 4.7 tons of the 5 tons we were supposed to. Just, just to put that 5 tons of oxygen in perspective, let me grab a gas tank here. One of these grass tanks holds 150 kilos when it's maxed out. That means we just consumed 33 and a third of them. So we've consumed 33 gas tanks worth of oxygen in the last cycle. That's that's just getting to ludicrous levels. But, you know, it's fine. Let's just make sure our gas is actually still flowing, is it? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. We have plenty of oxygen. I think that just might have been a case of uh, a bunch of people surviving in Atmos suits. Anyway, uh, here is our new little drop-off. This is where we're going to store shovels and vol pups for now to keep them out of harm's way. One of them got in sneaky. Where are you? There's one of them around here somewhere. There he is. We're going to get that one wrangled up and stored in there as soon as possible. Uh, oh, also eggs. Eggs have to go in there too. Our first shovel and a couple of eggs are already in there. Perfect. Uh, we might want to take the regular... You know what? We'll leave the regular thing. It'll cause a mess, but at least we have somewhere for the shovels to go. Now, ooh, yep, we're, we're slowly but surely expanding out across the top to shield the entire top half of the map. We're going to remove all the regolith, everything. And then we're going to start feeding into shovels, and then we're going to have to mine the... Well, we're going to have to start harvesting the top of the map for regolith to feed the shovels, to make more shovels, to make more food. And once it is completed, and we've got all that mining up and running, then we've got to drill a hole straight down the left-hand side of the map. Yes, all fun times ahead. To make things a little bit simpler, I've sort of... I've been fiddling around with the ladders here. The problem is they'll do two ladder segments and then they'll run back. So what I've started doing is putting every second ladder segment as an eight. So they're more likely to sort of hopscotch along. And it seems to be speeding them up a little bit. We've only been at this for a couple of cycles and already we've got most of space pretty much shielded. Well, 
We haven't got all the way there yet. We still haven't got out quite all the way to the edges, but we're close. Progress-wise, looking good, looking good, but we've got new printables. It's duplicate slash patron 89. A meep would always be nice, but they've got yokel. I'd prefer not to. Instead, we've got someone over here who's got a plus seven machinery. That's another mechatronics engineer. So please welcome Ransom the Blind as 89. We have finally reached the right-hand side. And you can tell because the world is circular and, or tubular, I suppose. And we can see the bricks from the other side, like the bunker tile and the ladder built on the other side, showing up on this side. Which, oh, someone's actually building it from the far side of the map. This is a rare opportunity. Where are you? So that duplicate there is building the tile on the opposite side of the map. I don't know how that works out, Jerick. Jerick? Yep, yep, Jerick Dane. It's fine. Good job, good job. Okay, right, let's get this finished out. I want to start farming shovels as soon as possible. We actually have a decent amount of them already. One second, we'll copy this over and we're going to deconstruct this. This was made out of, unfortunately, the wrong material and it instantly overheated. This one should be fine, at least for a while. Now, how many do we have? We have 12 shovel legs and three live ones in there, though I don't think they're going to reproduce. They're too old. And hopefully once we get through this side, we'll find a few more eggs along there. 15 would be ideal, but we can get by with less if needs be. But first we need to print a new duplicate. And uh, let's see. Well, machinery, strength, and a quick learner. Yeah, I, I sort of have a thing for mechatronics engineers. They're just so useful and cover so many things. So say hello to Chris Brinker, duplicate slash Patreon 90. Oh, only 90. That means we still have 51 to go. Uh, I probably should have been uh, less optimistic about our chances. Uh, we've finished the top rows, as in the whole way along. We now have steel bunker tiles, so we're fully protected from the sky. Now we've got to start organizing our regolith, manage or regolith harvesting. Yeah, we're going to need to start harvesting regolith from space. There we go. Just our standard, uh, our standard issue C minor design. We're going to move the bunker doors down to here, though, so we have four tiles of uh, a space above to collect regolith. We're going to want as much as possible. And then we're going to use this little blueprint tool so that we can just copy and paste that along without too much hassle. That just makes life so much simpler. I should have started doing this ages ago. Uh, we might have to move our ladder just a teench. No, actually, you know what? We'll worry about that in a bit. For now... Let's get everyone's. Uh, let's get everyone to start building this. This is going to be a little bit of a construction project. Before we can quite get this finished, though, we are we are constructing it at an excellent rate. We do have a new duplicate to welcome into our midst. Say hello to duplicate patron at ninety one. We've got Jason Bukata. Uh, Jason, welcome. You're going to be uh, doing some of our gophering. We're going to need even more of those. And over here, you'll notice. We've got a, some high priority setups going on. For example, all of the things up here are set to priority seven to get built. So our duplicates in the spacesuits will come up here and do these first to the highest priority. Then we've got this sort of layer six section all the way along here. So our duplicates will do that second. Then we've got our layer five sections down here. So they'll do that third. Then we do have some other construction commands, but they're way down here and they're all level fours. Now, the reason we've stuck all the level fours down here is that means anyone who's not, uh, well, the first 48 dupes are, have access to Atmos suits, meaning they will go, are the only ones that are allowed up here anyway, and they'll do all those jobs. And since all the jobs down here are set to level four, they won't bother with those unless there's nothing in space to do first. So this should leave this to all the other dupes who are slightly lower skilled to take care of this. Just a, a nice division of labor. Uh, at the same time, we're almost finished doing this up here, but we had to do a minor little detour. The minor detour had to do with glass. If you want to stick in some solar, which is a good idea if we want to harness that power up there, I've stuck in a few of these. We've queued up a whole bunch of molten glass, about 100 in each one. That should give us more than enough solar to get us started. However, I'm not sure how quickly we want to install it. I suppose now is a good time to really go over some numbers. There's a question that always comes up. Why haven't I tapped into that natural gas geyser? Where is it? Yeah, there's a natural gas geyser around here. So there's this natural gas geyser, and if we harness the natural gas, we burn it in a natural gas generator. Where is it? Yeah, this one here. It will give us 67 grams of polluted water for every 90 grams of carbon of uh, natural gas we burn. The thing about that is, once you work out all of the numbers on this, these things normally work out about 90 to 100 grams of natural gas. Just for ease of use, we'll say 90 grams of natural gas per second over its entire you know dormancy active period, which means this will produce about 67.5 grams of polluted water, which means we'll get about 50 grams a second of, well, 50 grams a second of oxygen out of it, roughly. Actually, 
a bit more, but let's say let's say 60 grams of oxygen a second. So it's 60 percent of a dupe's oxygen needs would be provided by harnessing that. And the thing is, if it takes us, we, we still have to put together a natural gas generator to go with this, and then we'll have to make sure it's got cooling, and we'll have to deal with the waste products of the polluted water and the the carbon dioxide coming out of it. They're not big deals. We'll also have to get in cooling. We'd probably stick it in somewhere in our yeah our industrial brick over here. However, if it we have to hire a duplicant every three cycles. So if it takes us more than two cycles to harness that natural gas geyser and build the, all the equipment that goes with it to make sure it's harnessed, polluted water sieved and dumped into the grid and all that, and we'll have to run the piping wherever our water sieves are and get it to our oxygen supply and all that. If it takes us longer than two cycles to do it, then we'll actually be in an oxygen deficit at the end of it. As in, we, we don't really need the power. All we want is the oxygen out of it. So... If it takes us, say, three cycles to do it, then by the time we've actually finished doing it, we've already got a whole other duplicate we've got to feed oxygen to. We would be better off putting that energy towards something that would get us even more water, say, like a rocket chimney or something like that. In this instance, the reason we're dedicating so much time to getting this up and running is it's to do with food. Now, another question that was brought up a lot was, um, why don't we off-gas polluted dirt from, say, food? In other words, take food, let it rot, turn that rotted food into oxygen and the polluted oxygen we can use to feed to our, or, or deodorize to feed to our duplicates. Well, uh, actually, let's go grab a hatch down here. If you were to, say, starvation ranch a shovel, at the end of it you'd get 10 kilo, or was it 10 kilos of meat. When you starvation ranch hatches over here, you end up with one kilo of meat. Where is it? Nope, we don't have any uh, meat to draw on just yet. So, or is it two kilos of meat? Uh, never mind. What it would, let's just say, if you were to provide rot on enough meat to feed oxygen to one duplicate, you'd need 60 kilos of meat to produce enough polluted oxygen. That 60 kilos of meat would feed 120 duplicates for a day. It's 120 duplicates worth of food. Um, you'd have to do that every cycle. That's an enormous amount of calories. I that's 1,200 calories worth of food. It's it's not possible. Like the amount of you one duplicate couldn't ranch that many shovels to start with, and that's probably the most efficient way of doing it. You could also do it with food, like say, oh, meal meal lice would probably be the best. Ah, here is meal lice. One, I believe, one piece of meal lice, uh, six hundred calories, is a kilo. As in, every time you harvest a, a kilo of or one plant, you'd get a kilo of meal lice. And bear in mind, it takes 60 kilos of oxygen to feed a duplicate. So at three cycles for it to actually mature, you'd need 60 of them, which means you'd need 180 mealwood plants. And if you harvest 180 mealwood plants, you would be able to, well, as long as you had 180 mealwood plants, you could keep one duplicate oxygenated off of the polluted dirt from the food. Of course, you also get seeds from them and there's things like that. There's ways you could extend that just a little bit, but... Yeah, no, just just no. And if you wanted to do uh, 180 of them, I think, yeah, and if you wanted to do it wild, you'd have to multiply that number by four. So, yeah, turning food into oxygen just does not work. Arbor trees, however, are a different story altogether. You can take trees and you can take those trees and turn them into, um, you can refine the wood. Oh, what are you doing, Epsilon 4? Are you going to do something? Yep, there you go, he's decided. You could take the trees and you can refine them down to make ethanol. That would give you, and the ethanol you can burn for water and such things. Now you also get carbon dioxide, lots of polluted dirt you could off-gas, there's ways to do it, we just don't have any pips and we don't have any trees and we won't have them until we get to space. And then once we get to space we're kind of almost better off going for the, the rocket chimney because the rocket chimney will give us more water in a faster manner as in if we go for the, oh there's, a, there's another shovel. If we go for the the ethanol route we'd have to go for, damn it, I have to cancel it. If we go for the ethanol route we'd have to actually grow all the trees and we'd have to grow them wild to make a water profit, which means we'd need an awful lot of pips, an awful lot of seeds, and then we'd have to expand the numbers. It will take us a couple hundred cycles just to get enough seeds to build it. It's going to take forever to scale up. So it's possible. It's just it would take a really long time. Also, the piping, I can't imagine the nightmare of putting together that much ethanol. We would need... I'll have to do the math on that at some point. Before all that math, though, let's uh, say hello to our newest duplicate, slash patron 92, and that would be Digifruit. Do you, Digifruit? Yeah, well, they're... Uh, Cooking, building, mole hands on culture, they will be going straight into a building role. When it comes to the Gravitas building down here, I do have the Deconstruct Points of Interest mod installed, so we can deconstruct all of these things, which I'm going to do. We're going to want the space. Plus, it just, yeah, it annoys me having them in the way. A couple of important things to note. One, those windows are made of 400 kilos of steel. They're steel windows, so when you deconstruct them, 
Yeah, it's 1.6 tons of steel you get out of this. It's handy and can be very useful at times. Uh, what are you doing there? You know what? You can get deconstructed as well, and we'll continue that ladder art segment down. At the same time, uh, you can destroy these uh, within the game rules. I did it once before where you basically get a metal refinery and you run liquid steel through it. Or was it Niobium? I think it was liquid steel. And you heat these up until they get to the point where they actually melt. You can melt the whole thing. It takes a while. It's uh, difficult, but it's actually quite doable. Uh, though once you've done it once, yeah, I just installed the mod after that. I'm like, you know what? I've proved I can do it to myself. That's enough for me. Mod time. Now, uh, yes. Deficit of water. We have a deficit of 7.75 kilos of water. That's how much water we need to produce enough oxygen. And if we went the refinement route of getting trees, which can be doable, hopefully, if there's a, if we can find them in space, you can make ethanol distilleries. Now, the ethanol you can burn off for water, well, you can burn off in a petroleum generator and three-eighths of it will come out as water. However, they also produce polluted dirt, 333 grams a second, which theoretically you could off-gas all of that into oxygen. Well, you lose a small percentage, but let's just assume you could off-gas it all. Now, I did a bit of, bunch of math on this, and to make up our deficit, we would need to run 14 distilleries. So if we ran 14 distilleries, we could actually make up our oxygen deficit, assuming we off-gassed all the polluted water, burned all the ethanol, and take, take the water from that and electrolyze it. Uh, you'd need about 14 distilleries, and for each distillery you need 7.2 wild trees, so it would take about 100 trees. we need 100 wild trees and 14 distilleries. That's, that's a fair chunk of distilleries to make all of that. Um, it, it's, it's doable, it's just... Yeah, that would also kill the game. A rocket chimney is going to kill the game. Uh, an ethanol distillery is going to kill the game. All the all of the solutions we've got to the problem are probably going to kill the game. It's just a case of which one provides us the most bang for our buck. Uh, at the same time, there was another suggestion to uh, use slicksters. Start refining down the carbon dioxide and turn all of that carbon dioxide into oil. Turn the oil into sour gas, cool it down into natural gas, and burn off that natural gas to get water. Now, just... To put that in perspective, if we were to take, uh, say, 10 kilos of oil and burn it in petroleum generators, we'd get 2.5 kilos of CO2. And if we took that 2.5 kilos of CO2, fed it to slicksters, and then boiled all the resulting oil into natural gas, you would, well, well you'd need 75 slicksters for this, by the way, you would get about 550 grams of oxygen out of it at the end. Once you've done all the conversions and done back and forth, 75 slicksters and 2.5 and tons of, or 2.5 kilos of carbon dioxide a second will be able to allow you to feed five and a half duplicates of oxygen so it's just an awful lot of effort and it will also kill your game quite a bit as well i think we, we had a, a map where we had 160 slicksters on it i think just to increase the amount of uh, oxygen we could produce though yes that game also ran out of a crawl not quite as bad as this one is at just yet though this is all taking far too long especially at the speed we're going at however there's a, a couple of things we need to do on the side we're sort of juggling too many things at once. One of the things I want to do is I want to dig this area out. This is going to be where our rocket chimney is going. And I want to drop all of this regolith into this ice biome and melt a lot of it. I prefer to melt it rather than dig it out. If we dig out the ice or the snow, we lose half the mass. So let's just dump a bunch of regolith on it. It's not actually very hot regolith. Eh, it's warm enough. It should hopefully melt most of it and then we can dump it down. And what I've been doing is slowly but surely digging out a big hole down the left hand side and we're going to take all this water and we're going to dump it down here where it's all going to keep going down here and eventually it's going to end up in this ice biome and we're going to flood this entire area and use the water from the top of the map all the way down to the bottom to melt this whole area and this will be a big water tank we then well move to a different location we just need everything up as far as that ladder we're going to build a wall this side of it um this will be the entire rocket chimney going up the entire side of the map well not the entire side. We're going to have it stop near the bottom down here. We're not going to go past this bottom layer. Uh, the reason being, just trying to dig out all of the, the magma down here is just too much effort. It would take so long, it would be a waste of time. Later on, we can expand down there if we survive. Uh, the question, of course, being if we survive. We're already over our map's water allotment, as in we're consuming more water per cycle than the map can produce. We'll just have to survive on our reserves until we can get the chimney up and running. All right, with that much warm regolith, I'm going to say lukewarm regolith on top of everything, it should hopefully start melting soon enough. Uh, we'll try and go down there and rescue those seeds while we're at it. How much is down there? Ooh, there's a little bit of sleep wheat grain down there we could hopefully rescue. Uh, every little bit of food helps. We're starting to not get ahead on much as, on food as we used to. We're sort of stabilizing here at 10, uh, 10 million calories. We're going to have to keep an eye on that now because because it's probably going to start going down. Well, we wait for that to finish its melting, which might take a little bit of time. There is one other thing we have to take care of, and that is excess water from our water tanks. I just noticed the toilets are starting to back up. Well, not quite back up, but all of our... Uh, the, the 
toilets produce about six kilos more water than you put into them. So you, well, 6.7 kilos more water than you put into them. So that excess water has to go somewhere. We've been dumping it into these storage tanks. Instead, I think we're going to pipe all of that and we're going to dump it into our oxygen supply and start burning it off as oxygen. We've got several tanks of this stuff. A little bit of moving around of all the pipes and now we have a nice nice flow of water going up here. Now this water is just going to be overwrite whatever's in here. So this will be the primary feed for these oxygen supply machines which provide uh, oxygen to our central base. As in the one down here where we're going to keep everyone temporarily until they all get moved into probably facilities like this. Sort of just uh, those little micro bases that take up less space and are far more efficient. However, we're not going to do that just yet. We've still got to finish out a few things. One, melt this side of the map, which is going quite well. Actually, I think we can even drop all this water now. This water would appear to all be melted. There is no ice left in that area. You know what? We're going to just strip all of that out. Actually, maybe just to there is fine. That means that water is going to ooh, maybe deconstruct that first. Yeah, we'll deconstruct those two. Then that water should fall all the way down here. Uh, oh. Wait a minute, there's a few things that maybe need doing. I should uh, maybe hold off on that for a second. First thing we want to do though is grab ourselves a new duplicate. We have somebody over here with diver's lung, uncultured, gastrophobic, and an interest in construction. So please say hello to duplicate patron 93, which is Quinn W. Well, Quinn, you will be going straight into our construction team because of that high building skill. Well, this should be a good little pool of water coming out of there. Uh, we'll want to get rid of that as well. That should mean all the fish in there should be able to escape, assuming we've done that correctly. You know what, let's make that a priority six, just in case. And, oh, almost missed a piece. We'll make you go as well, just to make sure all of that water streams out of there. <laughs> okay, what the hell? Nope, 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 stop, stop flapping all over the place. How is it getting all the way to the left-hand side? It shouldn't be able to get into this tile. There's a three-tile gap between here and here. How are you doing that? That is just magic. Pure magic. Oh, yeah, that's just magic, all right. Uh, okay, it's kind of end up in there, but... Uh, never mind, never mind. So long as it gets there in the end, that's all that counts. You got to admit, the water physics in this do look pr very pretty. <laughs> They're not very realistic. When you start mixing multiple liquids together, they do go a little bit crazy. And right in here, we have polluted water, clean water, and salt water. So the whole thing is probably... Oh, it's actually even out about now. Nope, wait, nope, it's gone crazy again. That might explain why it's a little bit uh, all over the shop as it comes down. But it is filling up this area nicely. A little bit of excavation with our dupes to remove some of the excess material that's lying around. And we've actually got ourselves a decent sized pool of water. I think we'll take all of this water that's over here and we'll dump it into the central tank. This is a hot water tank where there's it's actually quite a lot of heat. And currently we're draining all the water out of here, putting it through a bunch of sieves and water sieves and desalinators. So any water we throw in here will eventually get cleaned, turn into clean water and dumped up into our oxygen system. So let's just, yeah, let's just grab this all and start. We'll put in two pumps down here and start dumping it over there. Done. That should be all of this pool of water solved. Any water that ends up in here will, of course, get dumped over here, which will then eventually get dumped through all of these refinement processes. I could make it simpler, I could do, well, no, I could make it simpler. What I could do is just set up another section of these and it would technically be more power efficient because here I'm pumping the water over, then it mixes with this and then has to get pumped again. However, that would require more time and effort to set up and I'm just not willing to invest it. <laughs> uh, I would rather get on with it, so to speak. Now, uh, this with this done, next step is to finish melting this ice biome up here. Uh, in the background, all of the digging has just been ongoing. We have strip mined out all the regolith across the top. I need to actually build those, um, mm. next up should be the food, so we're going to have to get into shovels. But first, I'm thinking this is not melting fast enough. I was hoping the regolith would speed it along, but it's not. So I'm thinking we, we have a use for the semi-useless unit of liquid tepidizer. We are going to stick it in here, and we are going to use it to melt this entire biome. It might take a few cycles, but it'll do it. It's been a while since I've done it this way. There we go. We're not even going to try for automation. We just want to melt this as quickly as possible. That should quickly raise the heat in there. What's the water at? Come on, polluted water. Minus one. One. Right. This should dump in an enormous amount of heat and allow us to quickly melt this whole biome. I just want it out of the way with, and I want to get that chimney started. We need more food, more water, more everything, and we need it five minutes ago. Uh, this is just going to provide the local power for it. Surprisingly enough, this thing, well, the liquid tepidizer, it gets maligned a lot for not being very useful, but for melting ice biomes, uh, it is actually really, really handy if you want to do it very quickly. Let's say a quick hello to our newest duplicate slash patron. That will be 
Sven. Sven will be a Molhans Agricultural Science and Strength uh, duplicate. Uh, we'll be adding them to the team, bringing us up to 94. Oh, oh. Yeah. And I think now that we've got that done and we've got this starting to melt, we need to get into putting together a shovel farm. Uh, this is going to be feeding its regolith into it at some point in the future, so we want to plan it ahead just right. And I think we'll put it in down here because there's already some construction in place that should make it easier. Oh, before I get into this, let's cover one of the mistakes I made, or one of the many mistakes I make as I go along. There's always stuff you'll mess up. And it was uh, to do with the petroleum boiler. I have, uh, I have... Okay, please ignore that mess of piping. There's some a pump over here and a pump over this side, and they're just filtering oil out of both ends. And then they filter it through the system so that the crude oil gets dropped down here and then the petroleum gets filtered out and sent off into our petroleum storage area, which may actually have ended up being too small. But we'll worry about that in a minute. And what I meant to do was have it so that any overflow petroleum would kind of go along this line. However, I left this, uh, this in place, this bridge. So what happens is instead this petroleum comes out of the filter, comes here and gets priority to go this direction. Or it seems to be anyway. It shouldn't be. But what's happened is... This has filled up with way too much petroleum. You'll notice here that this is like 400 kilos. That should only be about 10 kilos of pressure all the way along there. So we need to maybe extract a bit more of that. I mean, it's it's just affecting the efficiency of this. So the, the, the petroleum, when it comes out, is not nearly as hot as it should be. It's not a big deal, but we prefer not to let this get out of hand. At some point, it could fill up even more and cause us more problems. So instead, maybe I think we'll limit the oil going in there to 9 kilos for a while, maybe, to just slow this down. That will give this pump a bit of time to catch up. It might also be, it's just the game has gotten so big, every time we delete piping, it causes this thing to chug. I've seen issues with that as well. With that little liquid valve installed, we reduce the flow to 9 kilos. Oh, damn it. I messed up, didn't I? I've, I put in this crude oil tank ages ago in case there was a break in the flow. Like, for example, there. I have no idea what happened there to cause that to uh, just go wonky. Uh, this tank would help stop that from happening. A little bit of a rejig, we'll make that 9 kilos of pressure over there and hopefully that oil pressure will start to go down. I'll keep an eye on it, we're 377, we'll come back at a later date and check on it. Now, now finally we can get along to doing the shovels, which is I think what we started off with the intention of doing when we started this episode. Ooh, how's the regular looking up there? That is excellent. We can collect it up to four tiles high, which should mean we'll be able to harvest more per meteor shower. So yeah, we really got to get it started. No, 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 no. Shovels first. Before we install this, though, we need to do a little bit of planning in the background. Uh, there's normally, there's normally always some background planning that you sort of skip over, but uh, just going to cover this. This is where the auto sweepers are going to be. Once we get access to thermium space material, we'll be using that to extract the thermium or the the regolith from out of here, and we'll daisy chain along auto dispensers. So each one will chuck it on to the next. So we need to figure out where we're going to place these, where our drop-off is going to be, and then make sure that we have our shovel farm beneath it. At the same time, we also have to put in, for automation here, where is it? We're going to have to put in these space scanners. Now, we're only going to run with two. We're not going to run with too many of them, to be honest. So we're going to have to put in space scanners as well, and we have to figure out where to put those, and they need to be 15 tiles away from anything that could interfere with them, including the steam turbine that's going to be on top of our, uh, our little shovel breeding ranch. So just uh, give me a minute here. There we go. I uh, ripped off this blueprint from my tutorial, so I just loaded back up the tutorial, copy-pasted the blueprint. But over here is where our space scanners are going to be. Then we're going to have all of these automatic dispensers dump off into this one point. And see, all the ones on this side will come this direction, all the ones on that side will come this direction. They'll all dump off down here. And we're going to put our... Ooh, actually, wait a minute. I might want to change that just slightly. Had to move it around just a little bit, but that should be an awful lot better. Now we just got to get this constructed as quickly as possible before we run out of, you know, food, oxygen, whatever's going on around here. There's always some sort of desperation we're, we're trying to avoid. The whole system is starting to shape up. We've uh, dumped this here on top because we are going to get all the regolith and do a massive sweep and dump all the regolith in here. This auto sweeper will pick it up and dump it into that automatic dispenser and down into this area. This is where we will be doing our breeding. As in, all the shovels here will be fed and groomed and they'll be producing lots of eggs and we'll keep the population, well, probably about 12 to 15 of them. And then the rest of them, all the excess ones, will get shipped out. They'll get sent up here, across this rail. Okay, this rail goes all the way down here, over here, keeps going down, and keeps going across to here. And eventually we'll drop it off into this breeding area, and new printables are available. Oh yes, uh, so they'll get dropped off in here, and once it's in here, we'll fill this up with the requisite amount of eggs. I think it's 1.6 shovels per duplicate. So 77 shovels are going to be required in here to feed this We'll probably put in about 90, though, just to be on the safe side and have a nice big backlog, because, you know, better safe than sorry. 
Once that's done, we can, well, while that is all going on and that is building up, we'll start on a rocket chimney. So uh, first up, new printables. Unfortunately, we can't get the lime. That would be really nice. I, I'm always a big fan of lime, but it leaves us with a, a cook or a construction, and we're definitely going with construction. So say hello to our duplicate Patreon 65 with Cynthia. Cynthia, welcome to the team. You'll be getting straight into construction. Uh, you don't really look much like a Cynthia, but I'm sorry, that's just the way the duplicate crumbles. Anyway, well, we're finishing off all of the conveyor rails, filling it up with water. This water is going to turn to steam and will help cool down the whole area. We're not really doing this for power, just the regolith will come in at 300 degrees at some points, and we want it to not be 300 degrees, otherwise we'd need to make everything in here out of space materials. We want to make it out of steel. It's cheaper, and we can afford to do that now, as opposed to waiting until we've got space materials. So the steam turbine will just eat the heat from the regolith. Regolith actually has terrible thermal capacity if you check it out. I think it's 0.2, so it's a fifth of, say, igneous rock or granite or any of those other ones, so it's pretty... it's not got a lot of heat in it. Even though it comes in at 300 degrees, it quickly destroy... you can quickly destroy that with a steam turbine, and we're not even going to cool the steam turbine. We're going to let it self-cool with its own output. The water will come out of here at 95 degrees, and it will cool that down just enough that we won't have to care, which reminds me we should probably hook up the gas to that. Where is power? We're going to just throw in a mix of probably hydrogen and oxygen. We don't really care too much. Just so long as there's a gas medium in here for it to exchange temperature with, we'll be fine. Okay, uh, with that done, while they're finishing that, let's have a quick look back over here at our ice melting. I've had to move this once already, and I think we've melted down even more. Oh, there goes some sleep wheat grain. Perfect. We'll... Uh, we may have to do something up here, or we may have to start pumping this water over there. <laughs> We'll find out when we get closer to the bottom, I think. That ice biome is actually getting pretty toasty, but it's taking forever to melt. Come on, we want to get that rocket chimney in place. How is our shovel farm coming along? We need to get the water in here turned to steam. To help with that, we're running a little bit of the regolith through the water on a conveyor rail to help bleed out the heat. Though, how have we got such cold regolith? What's going on here? Oh, okay, some of the regolith is not too warm. Hmm. We'll heat it up in no time. Uh, once we get this up to boiling point, we can then start throwing shovels in. Until then, we can't really as they'll drown. Bit of a downside to this. Um, hmm. Okay, I suppose that means we want to concentrate on the rocket chimney while we're waiting. Wait, no, no, no. Centralized power spine. That was it. We want centralized power, and we've been meaning to get around to that for a long time. We should also have enough gold now to make everything out of heavy watt wire. Yeah, so we can just run a big power spine down the center of the map. Ages ago, I did some minor modifications to the center of the base, and I replaced all the wires with, he with uh, conductive wire, uh, made of lead. Lots of lead conductive wire going through there. And I also spaced them out so we could run a power spine right up the middle. It's going to murder our decor, but, well, we don't really care too much. Everyone's so specialized that they only require a small amount of morale. We don't have to worry about decor too much. And, then, and if we check our power grid out here, our power grid is a complete mess. There's just lots of little power grids spread out all across the map. A little bit of centralization couldn't hurt, and I think we've got just enough time to do it. We can do it while we're waiting for those to, for that to melt and for our shovels to come online. Yeah, central power spine right through there. Unfortunately, before we can get this finished, it's time for another printable, because there is just no rest for the wicked. Uh, we're going for diver's lungs, of course, digging, athletics, unconstructive, please solid, duplicate patron slash 96. DXMTB? I am not sure if I can pronounce that. Maybe it's an acronym for something. DX mean time between... You know what? Uh, I, we've got we've got a duplicate base to run. Whoa, whoa, everyone just got a new friend. <laughs> so that's 96... 95 duplicates just went, oh, new friend. I was wondering what that slowdown was. Uh, power spine-wise, that power is just slowly going in. The thing is, only mechatronics engineers can build it. One of the reasons I have so many mechatronics engineers, I love mechatronics engineers because they're the only people that can build conveyor rails and that uh, advanced heavy watt wire. We're probably going to have to replace all of this heavy watt wire with the gold stuff as well. Maybe not just yet. Uh, it's just uh, this can only support, I think it's 20 kilowatts. This one can support 50. So it would behoove us to advance ourselves that way. Now, uh, over here, this ice biome up top... Ooh, it's a bit slow to pan and zoom. This ice biome is absolutely toasty. That water is 36 degrees, and the ice is still not melting as fast as it should. I think once we get to the bottom, we'll turn that off, and we'll just recirculate the water around a bit, or maybe we'll just dig through it. We're running out of time to get everything up and running. We, we definitely still have a lot of water, but I'm not sure how long it'll take us to get a, a fully functional rocket chimney up to spec. Uh, over here, this is unfortunately still not up to spec. I think we need to dump a bunch of heat in there. Though, mm, 
maybe just drawing in the regolith. You know what, the power spine is almost complete. Once it is, we can just start plugging in the the mining drills up there. That'll get us access to an awful lot of hot regolith. In fact, I think, I think the power spine is complete, is it? We've plugged it into our 48 dupe little micro mega base, and it's also plugged into our industrial brick, and it's also plugged into this area down here. I think, yes, I think we're ready to hook that up. We can start harvesting regolith from space. It'll be manual at first until we get space materials. But, yeah, I think we're golden. Oh, and one quick look over here. Let's see how our ice biome is going. That is mostly melted. That is... Hmm. Yeah, I'll get back to you in a bit, but I think we're going to just uh, be recirculating a bit of that heat to make sure that we melt that whole area. For now, uh, let's see if we can't hook this sucker up. I think a couple of transformers down here just run some power wires up already have all of the cabling in place, each one, it's three separate grids, we can throw that together in no time. That is what the power is going to look like, we'll stick in four transformers there, I think it's pretty cold up there, yeah we're right beside an ice biome, not a bother. So then all of the power will go up through here, we got four of the wires of it, there's three sections of eight, and yeah, and then there's one section down here that feeds into the two scanners. And we also stick in some anim uh, automation for the two scanners. That should go up to those and open all of the gates when the time comes, or open all of the bunker doors. Now, let's give them a bit of time to put this all together, because it's going to take them a bit of time. I have to keep running the game on slow speed, because if I try to put any faster than that, they keep lagging out and just standing there doing nothing. Finished. We now have power all the way through our little regular har harvesting facility. Automation wire in place. All we have to do is hook this up here. And boom, we're golden. And that should start the door opening procedure. And... Or shoot it. There we go. I'm kind of curious to see what that does to our battery supply down here, which... Oh, where are we? Yeah, battery supply does not like that. But we do have so many coal generators going on and on an awful lot of steam turbines running, I think... No, I think we're good. It's barely going to scratch us. Eh, let's, uh, let's speed it up a little bit. The duplicates can maybe get some construction done on the side. Over here, we're still uh, rotating through. It's still not quite boiling yet, but soon we are going to have an awful lot of fresh regolith. And that fresh regolith is going to be very, very hot. But before we can sweep up all of that delicious regolith for our shovels to consume, we're going to have to ha add another duplicate to our mix. Well, this is a very simple choice. Don't like anemic, mouth breathers, no thank you, and a plus seven rancher. Oh, oh well, yes, 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 yes. Say hello to Melena Nighthawk. Duplicant patron number 97. And there's a whole bunch of new friends uh, for everyone. I zoomed it out so we could see all the new friends when it kicked in. Yeah, I think we're going to have to cut it out there. Reason being, I am way over time. Plus, I'm never going to get this out at half four today. So I'll be a little bit late. Uh, apologies for that. It's just, it's it takes a long time to get anything done. And we're, there's so much we're trying to drug it at the same time. The rocket chimney, I think, will be our number one priority tomorrow. Well, no. This, getting this finished off, should be fairly much just a case of dumping the regolith in there and start farming shovels. Once that's up, we can just switch straight over to dr drilling this hole and putting in our rocket chimney. Melting all of that is going to be fairly simple. We've already stuck in a little bit of uh, piping here. So all the water from down here is getting piped up and dropped off the top. Uh, Temperature-wise, that should be looking... Yeah, we're dumping a bunch of hot water on top. It should eventually melt all the ice out of the way. At the same time, oh, there was one little beautiful piece of engineering done down here. This is a, this is sort of a compiler. What's happening is sometimes you'll pick up bits of polluted water. So I have it sort of dumped off into this side and they start sort of, as this backs up, it helps compress them all into packets so that instead of, uh, we, we don't end up with too much, mm, too many gaps in the pipe. We want a nice solid flow of water there to make sure that our, uh, our oxygen facility doesn't get any bad, bad problems. But no, all of that done, I think it's time to cut it out here for today. I hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm -hmm.